Hello and welcome everybody. And today I would like to start a new uh, opening series of sorts uh, about sort of the Queen's Gambit type of positions. So really, in my opinion, the Queen's Gambit could be anything that starts after d4, d5, c4. So there's a few things I'm not going to cover. Uh, I don't foresee myself looking at the Alvin counter gambit with e5, which is sort of a frivolous attempt to avoid opening theory and get to a strange position, but it's just not very good. I'm probably not going to look at uh, moves like knight f6 or bishop f5, which are objectively bad and certainly not mainstream. But I'm going to take a look at e6, which is sort of the queen's gambit declined. c6, which is the very famous Slav defense, and my personal favorite is black. And the, the queen's gambit accepted with d takes c4. So, for now, I'm going to start out with the Slav defense, if for no other reason, because it's what I know best. And uh, since I'm covering everything anyway, I might as well have more time to learn about the other stuff before I fill your brains with bad information. So d4, d5, c4, c6. So, especially among weaker players, I've seen a lot of people play c takes d5 here, and in my mind, this is just a bad move. It's a serious concession. After c takes d5, you end up getting a symmetrical position, almost always some sort of like knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, knight c6, and it nearly always peters out to a draw. Some people try to claim that white has some slight pull, but I quite frankly just don't believe it. I've had a... Uh, some strong players play the exchange slav against me, including a couple of grandmasters, and nobody's ever beaten me. So the real key in this position for white is to try to maintain the tension, and for black, it's to try to get a solid position. So if you think about it, at the moment, there's one thing that's really favoring white and one thing that's really favoring black. White has more space right now. In particular, the knight coming to c3 is possible, while black doesn't really have the option of putting his knight on c6. But black also has options of taking on c4 sometime and releasing the tension. So the main move here is knight to f3. Knight c3 has been played, but personally I'm having some trouble finding anything for white after dc4, because after e3, b5, a4, which is how white would treat this position if he had played knight f3, then here, b4 wins an important tempo. The knight doesn't really have a good score, so knight b1 after bishop a6 or something. Black seems to be completely fine. So the main move is knight to f3 on move 3. So this makes some sense. White's developing his knight. Uh, he, you know, If dc4 now after e3, I think white's in very good shape. Uh, there's a few variations here. Black, black can try bishop e6. And now uh, there's quite a few ways to prove an advantage, but my favorite is just queen c2 with the idea of recapturing this pawn as soon as you can. And if b5 after a4, white develops an enormous initiative. So also I should point out knight g5 here is a rather comical move. It makes a lot of sense trying to remove this defensive bishop and uh, show that it's not very well placed. And it's actually been played a few times, even in rapid games by some grandmasters. And uh, I don't have too much preparation in this uh, variation with 5 knight g5, but you can definitely research it a lot further. And uh, if you want to figure out more about this position, the only move you really need to look at seriously is a uh, queen to a5 check. So with that in mind, I'm going to go back to queen c2 and say white's a little bit better. Also, after b5, I think... White's really in the driver's seat. The main line goes a4, e6, and now strong move a, b5, and b3. With the idea of c takes b3, bishop takes b5 check, white wins his pawn back. He's got more space in the center, is ahead in development, all of his pieces on the queen's head look active, and black's a pawn is much more likely to get captured than to have any serious factor in the game. So there's been some lines, uh, attempts for black, some bishop b2, and trades, bishop b7, I've seen stuff like this, but I quite frankly don't believe in it at all. I think white should just be better. So um, the main move after knight f3 is to play knight f6. Okay, e6 is definitely playable here. It's a different move order. Uh, and it tries to avoid knight c3 or make it a little less attractive because of this d takes c4 is known as the note boom variation. And I think black's doing reasonably well at the moment in this line, although it's certainly very sharp. 
the main line goes e3, b5, a4, bishop d4, bishop d2, a5, a takes b5, bishop c3, bishop c3, cb5. At the moment, black's the pawn, but we see after b3, white wins it back. But here, after bishop b7, bc4, b4, black's going to have two annoying pass pawns, and he's got some good light square control. His pieces are very active. So this is a very double-edged position, of course. White has a good control of the center, and uh, white has certainly won his fair share of games here. But it's, it's, some, it's another thing to keep in mind, a different move order. Uh, usually after e6, white will play some sort of uh, e3 or g3, which are both quite playable as well. But I'm going to focus on knight f6 for now. So here there's a few uh, main ideas. One is to play knight c3. Uh, another is to play e3. And then there's some less common moves like queen b3 or queen c2. I'm going to get rid of these uh, sort of less common ones, queen b3, queen c2. Both are met by dc4, queen c4. And now I think after bishop f5, black really shouldn't have any issues. He'll play e6, knight bd7, bishop e7. Let's make a few moves. g3, e6, castle, castle, so knight c3, knight bd7. And, uh, okay, well, it, black is very solid. He's prevented e4 for quite a while, and... He's going to maybe play c5 for some counterplay at some point. His pieces are... Queen will come to b6. Rook might show up on d8. It's, his position is very solid, very sound, no weaknesses, and he has no reason to think he's worse. So that's sort of one line. And okay, there's more to it than that, but uh, this series is more about the Queen's Gambit in the more traditional sense, so I'm going to stick to the other moves for now. So... I'm going to start off with knight c3. Now, this move has been a common move for a long time, and here there's, I believe, again, three main moves for black. There's a6, e6, and uh, my personal favorite, d takes c4. So, at the moment, I believe the most common is a6. So, with this move, black is intending on playing b5, gaining space on the queen side, and in some cases the b5 square is very important. So there's a million tries for white here. And for example, one of them is a4. And now uh, black can play e6 as well here, which and in some of these positions, after black plays pawn to a5, uh, he gets good control of the b4 square, which is kind of annoying. Also, dc4 is possible. There's uh, some end game, I think, that goes g3, e6, bishop g2, c5 d c5, queen d1, knight d1, bishop c5, knight e5. White wins the pawn back and is probably a little bit better, but black seems to be holding a draw in most of these positions. So, but there's plenty of other tries as well. I've seen h3 here, uh, although it's not super common. I've seen bishop g5, which is extremely sharp. Uh, the most common one at the moment, I think, is e3. And there's been some interesting lines, b5, and now white doesn't really want to give black his extra space on the queen side. If he trades on b5 or d5, after something like this, uh, the black knight gets the c6 square, his pawn on b5 is ready to advance to b4 at some point, and compared to the normal exchange slav, white's dark squared bishop is stuck behind his own pawns, and it's very passive. So, normally white will play b3 here, and now... Uh, Bishop g4, and uh, there's plenty of moves here, but I think h3 is the main one. Bishop f3, queen f3, and now e5 is very interesting. Black's trying to strike back in the center, and there's some lines that go d takes e5, bishop b4, bishop d2, takes, takes, knight e4, and some long variations. And uh, I think black's doing all right at the end. Bishop b4, dc4, b takes c4, things like this, and queen b6 is coming next. Black's got certainly some play for his missing pawn. There have been many games in this line. Uh, re recently I noted that uh, the strong young uh, Vietnamese grandmaster, Lei Quang Liem, uh, my final round opponents in the World Youth Championship in 2008, who's now nearing 2700, he won a very nice game against Bacro in this line as white. And uh, likewise, 
think there was a game where uh, Grishuk played this line as white and Aronian held a draw as black. There's many things to look at here, although it's certainly a playable position for both sides. There's also uh, calmer lines. Uh, I think after a6, there's c5 as well. Uh, so white is trying to say, well, normally you wouldn't play c5 because black would hit it with b6. But here, if black plays b6, after you take queen takes black, may end up with some uh, unfavorable structural disadvantages on the queen side. So after a6, a common move is bishop f5. And then if bishop f4, let's say knight d7. And oftentimes games play, oftentimes there's moves like knight h5 coming up. And so, for example, if e3, I think knight h5 is a strong move. Also in this position, knight h4 has been played, after which black tends to come back to c8. It's all very complicated, but I think black has no reason to really be too worried about the opening. And uh, I'm not going to pretend I understand these ensuing middle games so well, because, uh, well, I don't. I don't really play them for either color, but I've definitely seen them before and a couple of ideas. So what I do understand, though, is what happens after e6. So after e6... White has two options. He can uh, transpose to a Moran variation with bishop g5, or sorry, with e3, or he can play bishop g5, which leads to sort of the uh, Moscow and Botvinnik systems. So after bishop g5, there's some very sharp variations. Uh, there's h6 is one man move, and after bishop h4, dc4, e4, g5, bishop g3, b5, uh, white is sacrificed a pawn, but black has really opened up his position. He's kind of he's a little bit overextended on both flanks, and white has a greater control of the center. There have been countless games that have been played in this variation, and uh, I remember there was one game Aronian white against the Nons that I definitely liked, and another one of the Nons games and non white against Lekko, and uh, it's very sharp line. And so basically the main idea is for both sides. White wants to maybe castle king side, play h4, moves like knight e5, f4, try to open the black position up at some point, a4, b3. He's playing all over the board. Black's often trying to keep his position solid and not worry about too much. I think the main line goes like bishop e2, knight bd7, castle, bishop g7, bishop d6. Actually, I think bishop back to f8 is a pretty common move here. And of course, there's a possibility of making a draw but oftentimes it's not taken so uh, bishop takes f8 has been played as well there's many things that have happened uh there's also some knight e5 in this position bishop b7 takes takes in bishop d6 here there's uh many variations all of which are very complicated but they're very rich positions i would highly encourage anybody who likes to attack and doesn't, doesn't really mind being down a pawn for a while to play these as white, uh, you'll have some very encouraging results. There's also one more game I'm remembering in a position like this one, uh, Rajabov against Anand. This is the only one that Anand actually lost. So uh, that was also a good game, although Rajabov certainly outclassed the current world champion. So... There's also the Botvinnik variation, which is a variation where black actually is the one who sacrifices material and gets to attack, while in this first variation, white's the one who's sacrificing. The Botvinnik goes dc4, e4, and b5. So black has won a pawn, but suddenly after e5, it looks like he's losing a piece. But black does have ways of avoiding the loss of a piece, so really just one, but it's a good one. So I'll give you a second to see if you can find it. All right, so the move is h6, and then bishop h4, g5. But here, bishop g3 actually is an extremely interesting move, and it's very seldom played. I've looked into it a bit myself, and I think it's actually quite promising. Uh, for example, something like knight d5, knight d2, and there's some interesting play. If you remember after knight h5, sorry, then in this position, I believe it goes bishop e2, bishop b7, a4, a6. 
And I think I showed a game where in my best move series, uh, Kromnik against Anand, where White played this very strong sacrifice, knight g5, knight g3, knight f7, king f7, fg3, and then uh, castled kingside and got a big attack. Although he did end up losing the game to uh, an unbelievable move. So go take a look at that. It was number nine. But there's also knight d5 for black, which I think is the better move. And just now knight d2 is often played to avoid pins with bishop b4. Looking at the e4 score, preparing bishop e2 to h5 in some cases. a4 is on the agenda, and it's a very interesting position. But I'm going to stick to the main move for now with knight g5, hg5, bishop g5. And this is a very topical position, although I think current the theory is favoring white. So knight bd7, e takes f6, bishop b7, g3, queen b6, bishop g2, castle, castle. And so they get to this position, which is extremely sharp. And it's actually kind of strange because uh, white is castled kingside and black is castled queenside, but that's really, that's where each side wants to play. Black is sort of trying to advance c5 and b4 and make moves in the queenside in the center. And white often is going to try to advance his h-pawn while normally you'd be trying to attack on other wings. But since here we're trying to advance, that also leaves both sides open for some attack. And there have been countless, very sharp, very interesting games here. Although I think the current status is that white is favored. So after c5, white plays d5. And there's a lot of interesting lines here, b4. So rook b1 was known for a long time to be a draw as seen, bc3, no, sorry, not bc3, queen a6, okay, I should point out, if bc3 after b takes c3, the point is, once the queen moves, there's going to be some painful sacrifices, and d takes e6, black does not want any part of this, so, the queen moves to a6, d takes e6, bishop g2, e7, bishop f1, queen d5, and I'm pretty sure this is just known to be a draw. Bishop e7, f e7. Uh, and then I'm trying to remember what happens in this position. I think bishop d3. Queen a8, knight b8 maybe. Something like this. I'm trying to... Sorry, I'm just, it's, I haven't really looked at this position too much because I know it's a forced draw. But I do know that uh, recently in a game after queen d5, uh, Grandmaster Meskin Amanov played rook to e8 in this position, which was a shocking new development. And it turns out, it, I talked to him after the game, it's actually a very strong move. And uh, he won a very nice game. I don't quite remember how it went, but I, I do remember that it was extremely... I thought it was a really cool game. So... Uh, that's very sharp, but current status is saying it's a draw. So for white, I would suggest the move knight to a4 here. And now black usually plays queen a6. And uh, here you have to think to yourself, what would you play with white? Your center is currently under some pretty serious pressure. If you lose your d-pawn and black gets a pass d-pawn and runs it down the board, you're going to have some issues. A trade of white scored bishops will probably favor black because he's more likely to take the long diagonal than white. So, but white realizes that black has advanced a bit on the queen side and tries to open some lines with a3. So, if black plays b3 to try to close the lines after knight c3, he's definitely made his queen side pawns less uh, mobile, and I think white's just clearly better. So, he's got to really take the plunge. The main move is now uh, bishop d5. I thought I saw some sort of knight b8 something or other here in this Mates Carlson game. But bishop d5, bishop d5, and now knight e5, pinning the bishop to the king. So for a long time, the main line went uh, a b4, rook d5, queen e2, c b4, knight c3. And now if rook a5, take, take, and knight e4, white as extremely dangerous compensation for, uh, well, not even compensation materials equal. Black's king is definitely feeling some pressure at the moment. His rook is a little bit out of play, but his pawns are strong. So while current theory is saying white's probably better here, uh, there's definitely chances for both sides. 
and queen c6 has been tried as well. The idea after knight d5, queen d5, knight f3 check is a very big threat. So uh, white has to do something about it. If he plays f4, he's about to get thrashed by bishop c5. So normally it goes like f3, and now something like bishop c5, king g2, knight d3. And, uh, okay, black's out in exchange, but he's got very active pieces, very well advanced pieces. His pawns are dangerous. It's, uh, I don't think his chances should be any worse in this position. So there was also a recent game where knight takes c5 was played in this position with the idea after bishop c5, a b4, this bishop on d5, on c5 is hanging, as well as the queen on a6. It's all extremely interesting and very sharp. I'm um, just trying to give you sort of the general uh, way to play these middle games. It's not really a repertoire series, more of an understanding series. So I think this would be a very, these are very interesting positions. It's pretty clear what both sides' plans are. White's going to try to attack the black king and maybe hit the f7 pawn at some point. And black's going to try to play with the center, use his, use his pressure on the queen side to make passers, things like that. So these, are, again, are very interesting positions, and uh, I think I'll leave the Botvinnik at that. So this was part one of the series. I don't, I still haven't decided how many parts it will be. We'll have to see. And part two, we'll start covering the Moran variation.